Welcome to Under the Night Sky. My name is Robin. Tonight we're going to explore the constellations of Ophiuchus, the serpent bearer, and Serpents, the serpent. I'll talk about how to find these constellations, some deep sky objects located in the constellations, and a couple of the myths associated with Ophiuchus and serpents. By late June, we are past solstice and the sun is setting just after 9 o'clock. Look to the southeast. By 10, you'll be able to see the stars of Ophiuchus and serpents above the horizon. Ophiuchus is a large man holding a snake. Ophiuchus is the serpent bearer, and serpents is the serpent he is bearing or holding. Ophiuchus and serpents are huge in the sky. Ophiuchus is the 11th largest constellation in the sky, and Serpents is the 23rd largest constellation. The brightest stars of Ophiuchus form a pattern that looks like an old coffee pot. He is flanked by two halves of the serpent. Serpents caput, meaning serpent head, and serpents cauda, meaning serpent tail. Ophiuchus and serpents are surrounded by constellations that I have shared in previous Under the Night Skies. They will help you find these two constellations. Such as Scorpius to the south of Ophiuchus and serpents. Hercules to the north. Lyra to the north and east. And Aquila to the east. We use these as guideposts. Ophiuchus has two very interesting stars. The first is Barnard's star. Barnard's star is a red dwarf star, 7 to 12 billion years old, and about 6 light years from Earth. In the upper left of this image is an artist's concept of a red dwarf star. Barnard's star is the fourth closest known individual star to the Sun. The only stars closer are the three stars of the Alpha Centauri system. Barnard's star can't be seen with the naked eye. This star has the largest proper motion, or moves faster against the background stars, of any star relative to the Sun. Around the year 9800, this star will come within about four light years of the Sun. Zeta Ophiuchi is another interesting star. This is an infrared image of Zeta Ophiuchi, the bluish star near the center of the image. It's a runaway star, plowing through the cosmos, creating this arcing interstellar bow wave, or bow shot, which, by the way, is about 12 light years from top to bottom. Zeta Ophiuchi is about 370 light years away and is moving toward the left at a scorching 15 miles per second. Its strong stellar wind precedes it, compressing and heating the dusty interstellar material and shaping that curved shock front. It's thought that Zeta Ophiuchi was once a member of a binary star system. Its companion star was more massive and shorter lived. When the companion exploded as a supernova, Zeta Ophiuchi was flung out of the system. Zeta Ophiuchi is 20 times more massive than our Sun and is 65,000 times more luminous than the Sun. It would be one of the brightest stars in the sky if it weren't surrounded by obscuring dust. Now, let's look at some deep sky objects. Ophiuchus has several globular clusters and dark nebulae. I'd like to start by showing you one of each, M9 and Barnard 64. This photo of M9 and Barnard 64 was taken by Phil Hoyle, one of our Astronomy Club members. M9 is the globular cluster on the left, and Barnard 64 is the dark nebula, the two areas devoid of stars, to the right of M9. Globular clusters contain hundreds of thousands of stars that are tightly bound together by gravity, with most of the stars concentrated at the cluster center. This large central mass pulls the outer stars inward, causing the cluster to have a spherical shape. M9 is about 27,000 light years away and is one of the nearer globular clusters to the center of the galaxy, being only 5,500 light years from the galactic core. M9's closeness to the center of the Milky Way has warped the cluster's shape, 
so it appears less spherical than other globulars. Dark nebulae or absorption nebulae such as Barnard 64 is a type of interstellar cloud that is so dense that it blocks the visible wavelengths of light from objects behind it such as stars and other deep sky objects. Let's look at another dark nebula, Barnard 59, the Pipe Nebula. The Pipe Nebula is about 600 to 700 light years away. It has two parts, the pipe stem going off to the right and the bowl of the pipe to the left. Dark clouds are very irregular. They have no clearly defined outer boundaries and sometimes take on some complex, intricate, and elaborate shapes such as seen in the Pipe Nebula. These clouds are where stars and planets begin. Understanding dark cloud development is essential to understanding star formation. Now let's look at M29, the Butterfly Nebula, located in the head of the serpent. This nebula is a nice example of a bipolar planetary nebula. Bipolar planetary nebulae are formed when the central object is not a single star, but a binary system. The primary component of this binary blew off its outer layers of atmosphere and is contracting into a white dwarf star. The smaller companion orbits very closely and may have been engulfed by the other's expanding stellar atmosphere, with the resulting interaction creating the nebula we see. It's estimated that the stellar outburst that formed the lobes happened just 1,200 years ago. Next, we have M16, the Eagle Nebula in the tail of serpents. The Eagle Nebula can be seen at the center of this image. It's an open star cluster within a diffuse emission nebula. An emission nebula is a nebula giving birth to stars and the radiation from these stars lights up the nebula. The name eagle comes from the dark silhouette near the center of the cluster and sort of looks like an eagle. This area of the nebula was made famous as the Pillars of Creation when imaged by the Hubble Space Telescope. The Pillars of Creation are only one of the several active star forming regions in this nebula. And speaking of the Pillars of Creation, I had to show you this Hubble image. You've probably seen it before. These are columns of cool interstellar hydrogen gas and dust within which new stars are being born. The pillars protrude from the inner wall of a dark molecular cloud, like stalagmites from the floor of a cavern. They're nearly 7,000 light years away. Ultraviolet light from new stars is responsible for illuminating the surfaces of the columns and the ghostly streamers of gas boiling away from their surfaces. The tallest pillar is about a light year long from base to tip. Next, we have Seifert's sextet, NGC 6027 in the serpent's head. This is a group of galaxies about 190 million light years away. The bright galaxy above the pink face on spiral galaxy is NGC 6027. The group appears to contain six galaxies. However, the small pink face on spiral galaxy called NGC 6027D is in the background and just happens to be in the same line of sight. This galaxy is 700 million light years away and is not interacting with the other five galaxies. But as you can see, it must be an extremely large galaxy. The galaxy to the left of NGC 6027 is actually a part of the tail from the galaxy. These galaxies should continue to interact for hundreds of millions of years, eventually merging into one giant elliptical galaxy. This is our last deep sky object and it's known as Hoag's object. This is a ring galaxy. The outside ring is dominated by bright blue stars, while the center is a ball of much redder stars that are probably much older. Between the two is a gap that is almost completely dark. How this galaxy formed is unknown. 
It's thought that perhaps a galaxy collision billions of years ago and the gravitational effect of a central bar that no longer exists in one of the galaxies created this interesting shape. The galaxy spans about 100,000 light years across and lies about 600 million light years away. Since the discovery of Hoag's object, more of these objects have been identified and collectively labeled as a form of ring galaxy. And if you look in the gap at about one o'clock, you can see another ring galaxy that lies far off in the distance. Let's move on to a couple of stories. Ophiuchus and Serpens are ancient constellations. In the ancient Babylonian astronomical text, Moapen, the stars of Ophiuchus and Serpens are described as the Baba, a warrior god having great strength and prowess in battle, and he was the patron of the city Kis. In ancient Romanian tradition, the snake is known as the guardian serpent. In their mythology, Sarpele, the serpent, is much larger than serpents, as it includes the stars of Ophiuchus and forms a large coil shape in the sky. This region of sky lies almost opposite the summer solstice point, making it visible almost all night during the summer. This was true even 2,000 to 3,000 years ago, which may be why this constellation has such a presence in Romanian sky mythology. In newer times, with the overlaying Christian symbolism found in many of the Romanian constellations, this serpent becomes the snake that tempted Eve in the Garden of Eden. In Greek mythology, Ophiuchus represents the god Aesculapius, the first doctor of medicine, expert in plants, and the healing powers of different herbs. He could even bring people back from the dead. It seems that one day, Aesculapius was visiting a friend, and seeing a snake in the room, he killed it. Then, to the great surprise of both, a second snake slithered into the room with an herb in its mouth. It gave the herb to the first snake, and the snake was resurrected. It was this herb that taught Aesculapius the great powers of certain herbs over life and death. He honed his skills, and before long, his reputation for saving lives was widely known. However, not everyone was happy with Aesculapius. Hades, god of the underworld, complained to his brother Zeus that fewer and fewer souls were being sent to the underworld. Hades demanded that Zeus put a stop to all the life-saving. After all, only the gods were immortal. If Aesculapius wasn't stopped, humans would also become immortal. Zeus agreed with his brother's argument and hurled a thunderbolt at Aesculapius, killing him. However, Zeus did admire the knowledge and skill of Aesculapius and placed him among the stars as Ophiuchus, along with the serpent that first taught him the importance of herbs. That's it for this Under the Night Sky. Thank you for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed exploring Ophiuchus the Serpent Bearer and Serpents the Serpent with me. Join me next month when we explore the constellation Sagittarius the Archer. Thank you.